what we have here is a, a demo uh, which is uh, connected like this. What I'm showing you here is the converged wired and wireless. On the, on the 3850 itself, what we have is wireless or the, a wired phones connected over there. And at the same time, <coughs> we have an access point connected and we have a wired PC, uh, which is supposed to be a corporate, uh, a corporate um, provision laptop. At the same time, we have two wireless users uh, in the form of uh, iPads, which is, using, which is configured as a corporate user and a, 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 a partner user or a guest user. What we're going to show here is differentiated policies which are ready? based on what type of credentials, how we are going to uh, 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 authorize with the network, whether you're going to use a carpet user ID or a, or a partner user's ID, uh, you are going to get differentiated policies. The actors are going to, push, be going to be pushed from the eyes down to the, down to the switch to those clients saying that, okay, this particular device is provisioned or non-provisioned. When, when it's provisioned, you will see that the, the provisioned uh, device or the, uh, the iPad or the, or the laptop will be able to share or connect to the resources of the enterprise. Whereas the partner device which is there will not be able to get to the uh, enterprise network. He will just be able to share, get, get to the internet traffic. Apart from that, he will not be able to get much more than that. The other thing which I'm going to, we are going to also show here is the, 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 uh, uh, the uh, feature where we are assigning some bandwidth to the, to the uh, guest users. Where we are doing a file transfer from from one of the uh, lap, from the iPads to the uh, wired device, which is on the background there. And in the next room, we have the whole server uh, platform there, uh, which is running an FTP server. So when we do upload a file from a, a corporate laptop, and uh, the same file when it's up uploaded from the the, the partner lap uh, pa partner iPad, you will see the differentiated policies applying there, where the enterprise user will get a faster faster uh, 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 bandwidth. He will be able to do it faster than the than the guest user. So that is one of the things which we will be showing. Yeah, good. Okay, guys. Uh, morning, everyone. So, okay, what we are going to detect is uh, corporate users walking into an enterprise network, and then we have a vendor user who would be walking with an iPad again in the enterprise network. So the first scenario that we are going to show is the onboarding. That uh, what all access list does get applied when I log in through the corporate user ID and as well as my friend Krish when he logs in with a guest ID what all access list and policies do get applied on his iPad. So uh, this is the console, I have actually switched on the debug for access session and all the events. So as of now I am not able to project the iPad screen onto this, uh, onto this but as soon as I am authenticated I will be able to project both the iPad screens to you onto the bigger screen so that you guys can see it. So as of now, I have a SSID which says CAT 3850. I'm just going to log in into that. Give my so you will be able to see the authentication events. Krish has already authenticated. So I'm going to authenticate with Corp user ID, which is Corp One. Don't give the password, everybody. Yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <coughs> so here I get a certificate. You guys will not be able to see it. It's quite small. So I get a certificate from the eyes. I authenticate that. I get onto the uh, SSID. My laptop is also on the same SSID. That's how I'm going to project the screen. So here you get the crash screen, and here is the corporate ID. So the, the one I'm pulling it up is the corporate iPad, and the one which is now I'm pulling it is the okay. So this one is the corporate one. So I'll just change the color so that you guys can see it. So white one is the corporate iPad, black one is the vendor iPad. No, this is not So you would have seen that we got certain authentication events which were because we logged in with a particular user ID on it. Now I'm going to show you the policy which were applied and what user ID we logged in with. So I've actually you know put in some aliases. So it's not working. Let me show it to you. So access. Let me show you something else. Show wireless client summary. So this is where you can see actually we have three clients. One is my uh, MacBook Pro laptop and other two are the iPad. So I'm going to select this particular MAC address and do show access 
sorry mac and i'm going to put this particular mac address and say details now you can see that this particular user has logged in with corp one user id is that clear to you guys can you guys see same, that you can see it could be bold the, the font could yeah bold the font or something okay. let me change that Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so now you guys can see that this particular iPad has logged in with Corp 1, which says that it has already been authorized. And we have certain ACS access list being downloaded from the ICE, which is with this particular name. And if I go ahead and sh do show policy map interface wireless client Mac. And the same MAC address, okay, so it copied something else. <laughs> so it's telling you the uh, US policies that have been applied on this particular corporate user. So for data, we have not said anything, it's unlimited. Now the second demo that we're going to show you is, so as a corporate user, I should be able to access all the internet, intranet servers that I have in my enterprise network. And same goes with Krish, as he is a vendor, he should not be able to access those particular websites. So I'm just going to open Safari on this. So this is an IP address for my default intranet website, which I have been able to open. Now if Krish is trying to open that, he'll not be able to open because there's an access list, a DACL, downloadable ACL from the ICE, which downloads particularly for the BYOD or the uh, non-enterprise users and blocks them not to not to able to use, uh, open any internet websites. Yep. This is one. one this question. So this is really a, a, an ICE downloadable ACL demo. I mean, this is not specific to the controller. But again, we have certain features on the, swi on the switch itself, which has to facilitate this particular uh, functionality. So that's where it comes in. It's more so of an ICE BYOD, right. but still mm -hmm. with the plumbing done on the switch itself. But what are those specific features that are required on the 3850 to do this? So, first of all, the wireless functionality, which is one of them at the same time. Then yeah, we need to have to like a standard, you know, a controller that I have in the enterprise today. What's the difference that makes this it's work here? Nothing, nothing different from what we can see there. So the functions that are specific to the 3850 would also then be replicated onto the 5760 because they share the same code base. Yes, absolutely. But is there something that this you needs that can't, I can't find on the 5508 or wasn't No, two. it's the same thing. It's the same thing which is going to be there. But the other thing which is going to happen here is the provisioning part, the onboarding part, which was not there earlier, is going to be available on, this, on the 3850 as well. But we are going to sync it up with or the, the controller-based architecture as well as with the switch-based architecture. Would it be fair to say that one difference with the 3850 is that when you're applying QS to the wireless client, it's, a, it's not in a cap lab tunnel, so you can get your hands on the identity or on the information specific to right. the user, it's, whereas otherwise yeah. it's just a cap it, lab it, It's because you're terminating the cap lab tunnel before it, it ends up going yeah. all the way to the control. And at the, same, at the same time, we have the wired, wired laptop, which is here and we are applying the policies at the switch itself. No longer, uh, for the wireless policies, I'm not going to any other controller in, in, the, in, the, in the distribution or so. So I have a question about that, when the demo's over. Okay, great. <laughs> great, the second demo is we are gonna show is that how we can police the traffic for vendor as well as for the enterprise customer. So what we're going to do is police the ingress traffic. So what we're trying to do here is, we are just opening a FTP client. My FTP server is in the cloud at my uh, UCS. So this is the FTP client that we have. We're trying to log in into that. And then I have a local file on my iPad which I'll be trying to upload it to the FTP server. So you, could, uh, you will be able to clearly see the difference of upload speed for both the users. So I say upload. I go here and I say upload. I say uh, rename the file and give any name. And I say okay. So if you can see the white laptop which is a corporate ID. So it's downloading at an unlimited speed. If you look at Krish who is a vendor, you can see the speed which is pulled oh, yeah. to somewhere around 500 bps. Or He's starving. So, <laughs> so that's the difference on the egress US policy that we can apply. So uh, as Jackie told you previously, with 3850 you can go ahead and apply policies based on the access point, the radios, the client, on the SSIDs, so all those options you have because of the APC US policy of service available on 3850.
and this is being applied at the switch, switch so yes. you don't have to worry about uh, it's not being it's not no, no, consuming no. bandwidth all the way through no, your stack. No. Exactly. You're not That's cool. bandwidth back calling all the traffic to centralized controller because yeah. they're terminating at the, at the access. access. That's center. really cool. Doing all the policy, QoS, security implementation at the access. And then and it's a single policy. I'm not using the different policy for my wired user and not a, a, a wireless user. OK, going forward, I'm going to show you, uh, based on the slide which I have here, the voice and video optimization. Uh, in this case, we have uh, uh, um, the Java client running on the, on the iPad here, and we have some phones which are connected on the, on the back end. So what we will do is we will initiate a call. Uh, based on the discussions earlier, you saw that the, all my, all my uh, call database was going north-south, basically going up to the controller in a, in a traditional centralized architecture. But here, what's going to happen is since I'm on the same switch, my call term calls happen east-west on the same switch itself. Give us two minutes, we'll be done with it. Anupam, you want to make a call? Anupam, you want to just wait? Oh, so it'll automatically, oh, it'll automatically pick it up. You don't need to do it. No. Hugo, Hugo will take it. Which one? This one? So no. automatically, it will automatically come it's out. It's auto-answer, auto-answer. No, 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 it's auto-answer. Just continue with your demo. Okay. Now, that being said, we have the voice call happening at the access itself, east-west, and we're not consuming any bandwidth on, on the distribution or, or, or on, the, on the core. So mm -hmm. that's where you're, you're conserving your bandwidth there. Going forward, the other thing is which we have here is the, the multicast op optimization. In the past, what you've seen is multicast was, was on all the, all the devices which were connected to the switch or to the access point. Here, in this case, it's not that. There is intelligence built into this. As you can see here on my, on my, on my, on my uh, picture here, you can see that only the, the, the devices which are, asked, which are requesting for an IGMP a join will have the multicast uh, forwarding happening at the switch, which is replicated at the switch and being sent down to the clients. So that is one, one of the smart things which, is, which you can see here. Again, nothing much on, on, on the back end which you're not conserving. All you need to do is one multicast source hitting the switch, and from there it's being replicated on all the ports or connected to all the ports on the 3850. What was the prior approach? Was it to do a single stream out to each AP? So what we AP used to do is, to yes, what we used to do in the past is we, we call this as a video stream technology where one stream used to go to the multicast group to which all the access points were, all the access points were connected. And when the, if, 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 whether it is a client or there is no client, it used to go and give, send, send, send the IGMP response back to the client. But here, the smartness is built into it, and that's where it comes into picture. The other thing which I would like to go and tell you here is when Nitin was showing you the commands, what, what was the difference which you saw there? Simple iOS commands. There was absolutely nothing different over there. Your look and feel, the management thing, whatever you do today on the Catalyst 30, uh, on, the 30, on the 3750 switch, can be same apply to the wireless controller. So it's going to have the same look and feel of an iOS today. Okay, so that's my question about, around this. So we've gone and we have scrapped the old airspace stuff and we've recoded everything that it does in iOS. I wouldn't say we have scrapped it. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way it was, it was put to me was. No, well, we no, rebuilt no. the entire code base in it's iOS. Absolutely. <laughs> Other than doing CLI jockey stuff with this, yes. I have not seen the GUI for the 3850. You I'm assuming that it doesn't exist and no. it's in NCS manager. Okay, no. We're going to have a 3850. I, frankly speaking, I have the, uh, the code for the 3850 with the, uh, with the web GUI on this laptop now. So, so maybe I, we'll do that say, this afternoon? No, yeah. no, it's not. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, so, so it's, it's, it's going to be, it's coming. It's it's coming. You are ah, right. It's, it's, it's coming. in the next yeah, release. Absolutely. It's going to be in the next release, and you will see the difference mm -hmm. between. Next month, it'll be there. Yeah. Thank you. That, that was my key was, sure, is this sure. something that I have to now get Prime and CS Manager to take care of because we, oops, forgot the GUI? Yeah. No, we didn't no. forget. It's coming. It's coming. Thank you. Any more questions? I, mean, I don't want to uh, bite into Hugo's time. I finished my demos. We have two more demos in the afternoon on the same thing. Uh, we're going to use the same hardware and software, nothing different, but still it's going to be here. Okay.